All right, let's see if we're live here. I'll check the channel. Now, last time I did this, I was on, uh, let's see. Can somebody post, post in the chat? Let me know if chat is working. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna have to use the computer like I did last time, but it should be working now. It looks like we're okay. Uh, at least we're live. Now, I decided today to go live at a different time, so who knows, maybe we will only have a few people today uh, rather than the usual time uh, a little bit earlier. It's the same day, but different time. But as usual, I make all these videos available so people can watch them uh, whenever they like. So let's see if we get uh, chat working over here. Post something in the chat if you can. Looks like the chat is working, but again, it's not working on my phone. So let me see here, let me set this up so I can still read the chat. All right, we should be okay. Sometimes you have to adapt. All right, looks like a lot of people are joining us. Nice to see you. Uh, so I have made two different live videos already, one talking about books that get you fluent and one talking about movies that get you fluent. And now I want to talk about how you can use TV shows uh, to become a fluent speaker. Now this is uh, going to be a little bit different from what you usually see on YouTube about learning English. Uh, typically, well even before I get into this, let me give you just like a quick uh, scenario, but it looks like, all right, the chat, chat is working. So we probably have maybe some different folks, some different people joining us today. So I want you to imagine two conversations. We're going to talk about two conversations and then we'll get into today's lesson. All right, so conversation one, imagine you have to speak English, you have to join a conversation with someone, uh, but you don't know anything about it. So you're going to meet someone, you don't know what they're going to talk about, you don't know who they are, uh, and you probably are not very prepared for what you're going to talk about. So who knows, maybe you know something, maybe you can have a conversation with them, or maybe you cannot. All right, so that's situation one. So conversation number one, uh, you basically have like no information. Information. All right, chat's working over here. Nice to see everybody. All right, so imagine conversation one, you have no information. Conversation number two over here, you are well prepared, well prepared. So in this conversation, you know what everyone's going to talk about before the conversation begins. You know what everyone's going to talk about before the conversation begins. So you know the topic, you know the kinds of vocabulary they're going to be learning, you are familiar with maybe their accents or their ways of speaking. So which of these conversations did you, or do you think uh, would be easier and more enjoyable? Conversation one, where you have no information, uh, or conversation two, where you are well prepared and you know what people are going to talk about. This is probably going to be a pretty easy quiz, uh, but just post in the chat and see, I wonder why chat will not work over here. This is so crazy that this doesn't work, hopefully. All right, so remember, you got no information in conversation number one, but you're well prepared in conversation two. I don't know about you, but this conversation is probably going to be much more difficult. All right. Simply because you're not prepared, you might be prepared, you might know what some of that information is, uh, but probably you're going to have more trouble uh, you know, than what most people are, are ready for. Uh, so if you're already fluent, it really doesn't matter which of these you're in. Maybe you know the, about the information, maybe you do not, uh, but it doesn't really matter. All right. But if you're not yet fluent, if you have no information, you're probably going to feel a little bit nervous about that. Let me check the chat and make sure everyone is here. Well, look at that. People using Nihongo ga arimasu ne. I can't see it. It's like I got my computer too far away. <laughs> Let me pull that a little bit closer. All right, but nice to see. All right, chat is working. All right, so the point of this quick little exercise, now this conversation is probably going to be more difficult for most people than this one. And so we want to be learning where we are well prepared for conversations. And the more prepared you are, the more confident you will feel. And that's how you will speak fluently. So if you're feeling confident, you know what's going to happen. Uh, and again, even if you don't know what's going to happen, a native speaker is really prepared for any kind of, uh, of conversation. doesn't matter when you have it. Uh, like today, I went to meet a friend of mine just before uh, shooting this video. 
Uh, he just opened a new office in a different location and I was talking to him. Uh, and so I just walked in and there was a meeting of people already taking place. And these are all Japanese people speaking Japanese. And I walk in and he's just like, hey, how's everybody doing? And, you know, start speaking Japanese, have some good conversations with people. And I wasn't prepared for that. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I was able to speak just fine. All right. So we want you to be prepared, uh, but again, like the preparation I did for that was just me learning Japanese the way I do. All right, so it looks like people, of course, all right, people understand that. All right, now we want to apply this same information to learning with TV shows, all right? So I'm gonna cover five steps uh, that will enable you to do this quite easily. Now, typically what people do is like the first kind, maybe you will watch like a clip, you know, here's a clip of a TV show. We're going to teach you a few phrases and this is like learn English with TV shows or whatever. Um, and so this is helpful if you can remember that vocabulary, but most people do not. Uh, and the reason they don't is because you don't really spend very much time with the vocabulary. So these clips are usually very short. You watch something like I learned some vocabulary words, but maybe the next day I can't actually use that vocabulary fluently. All right, do you ever have that problem? Uh, this is a typical thing that happens to people when they're not learning uh, deeply with the information. All right, so instead of doing this, I want to cover five different things here. So one, two, three, four, five, that will help you make this a lot easier. All right, let me check the chat, make sure everybody is working there. Whoops, I should put it all right, uh, let's see everybody. I'm in Ecuador. You speak very well the language. Well, I hope so. I've been learning it for many years. Uh, but hopefully it looks like, all right, so chat. Yes, chat is working here. Okay, let's continue. All right, so we're going to go over these five different things uh, and this should be an interesting lesson. It will teach you some vocabulary as well. But really I want to get you to think differently about how you learn with a TV show uh, because this is going to change the way you learn so you become fluent with the TV show. Now in my two videos about uh, getting fluent with movies and getting fluent with books, which I, I have linked down in the description below this video, so you can click on the links uh, on those videos. Um, I was talking about in those, basically you need to get naturally varied review. And this is how you're learning with the same information in different ways, where you're getting related information. Like if I hear the same uh, phrase or some speech or something like that, but five different people say it. Or if I'm learning, if I understand the situation, like being surprised, and then I hear 10 different people like being surprised by something. So in the examples that I gave for movies and TV or movies and books, uh, these are both things where you're getting lots of naturally varied reviews. So click on the links uh, in the description below this video to watch those if you've not seen them already. Uh, but we're going to talk about uh, TV shows because uh, it's, it's similar, uh, but we can do some interesting things with TV shows. All right. So the first thing uh, we want to do, I want to cover uh, just like the very simple steps you should be doing with TV shows in order to get a lot more depth uh, from your learning. And forgive me if I, uh, if I don't notice the chat, I want to get through this and then I'll go back and answer uh, questions after that. But I am watching, I'm watching, make sure people are uh, following here. All right, the first thing you need to do when you're trying to learn with a TV show is like choosing the content. Now, when I say choosing the content, I mean there are basically two different kinds of TV shows. There are TV shows that have a, like a series and a whole story that's split into a couple of different episodes. All right. So if we have, uh, and, and this is the, the English is a little bit different, like in British English, uh, like a whole, what we will call in English, uh, American English, we call this like a season. So a season is usually one year or a few months of television and you might have a few episodes in them. So we call this a season, just like the four seasons. Uh, but British English is typically, this is a series. So a series just means like an order of things and we do use this word in American English, but we don't use it when we're talking about uh, TV shows in this way. So just keep that in mind as you think about TV shows. So when we talk about a TV series in American English, we actually mean all of the years together of that show. All right, so that's what we call a TV series, like the whole thing. But a series in British English is basically one year or one season of that, all right? 
just to keep that in mind. So we have these two different kinds of content. There is the, the one where you have like each episode is a different thing. You can watch them in any order. There's not like a continuing story that happens. Uh, so that's one kind. And the second kind is where we have some kind of broader, longer story that's happening over all of these episodes. Okay. So I recommend people do the first kind where you only have to focus on one episode. So you don't really need to watch like all of these to get all of the content. All right. So you can just watch one episode and focus on just that one thing. So an, uh, like an example of this would be The Simpsons. So this is a cartoon like The Simpsons. So The Simpsons, and then you might have something with like an arc. So again, I talked about this in movies uh, where I also recommended uh, having like focusing on something where you can get that review again and again inside the same movie. Uh, and so we want to do that with TV shows as well. So a, an episode or a, a kind of show where we might have an arc across a whole season would be like Breaking Bad. So Breaking Bad. So both of these are good shows. I haven't really watched The Simpsons in many years, but it's popular and uh, there are many episodes and you can watch them in any order and you will understand the episode just from that episode. All right. I think that makes sense. All right. Let's see. All right, making sure uh, I'm not getting people lost in the chat over here. I will go back, uh, but hopefully this makes sense. So the first thing is choosing the kind of content, and I recommend you do something that's just individual episodes like this. All right, you can do uh, something broader if you like, if you want maybe a, a bigger challenge or something, but especially if your English is, uh, maybe you can understand what I'm saying, but you have trouble using a lot of the things that you hear in conversations uh, in movies or TV shows. Uh, if you have trouble using those when you speak, then I would recommend really focusing on a particular thing. All right, let me check the chat. Uh, hopefully that makes sense for people over here. All right, now this is a, the, the next thing here. Let me erase this. So after we choose the content, we want to get like a broader picture of the story. We want to learn more about this, just like we want to be well prepared for conversations. We want to be well prepared for the TV show. So the basic idea is that the more you know about the TV show before you watch it, the more enjoyable it will be. Now, obviously, this might like spoil the show. So uh, like a, a thing you will see often in like, like YouTube videos or whatever talking about movies is a spoiler. All right, so to spoil something, just like we have maybe some food that becomes old and it gets bad and people don't want to eat that anymore, to spoil something means to, means to basically make it bad for somebody. So if I have a surprise planned for someone and my other friend comes and he says, hey, they're going to surprise you, that, that friend spoiled the surprise. So often people don't want to know what's going to happen in a movie or TV show and they say, don't spoil it for me. Don't spoil it for me. Don't spoil the movie. Don't spoil the TV show. Uh, but what I'm recommending here, this is really to help you learn the language and to get fluent in the language. And so it's okay to spoil it for you. I, I recommend you actually spoil the movie for yourself or spoil the TV show. Uh, that way you can actually focus on what's happening and you don't have to spend time like trying to think and translate as you watch the show. So if you notice, just like we have two conversations that I talked about at the beginning of this video, so if you have no information at all, if you just watch a TV show and you don't know what they're talking about or you don't know what it's about, then your brain is really trying to struggle to understand the vocabulary, the accents, and follow the story, and you're not even saying anything. You're just trying to understand what's going on. So we don't care about doing that. It's okay if you spoil the movie or TV show. We really want to understand that. So these are called spoilers. So don't spoil it for me, no spoilers. It's okay if you get spoiled for the conversation. All right, I think hopefully we're making sense over here. All right, uh, so after we choose, again, choose the content, we want to understand. We 
We want to understand the story. We want to get the backstory. We want to know what happens. And there are different ways we can do this. So we can go to blogs or we can go right here on YouTube and we're looking for information about this. So here are some specific keywords you can use when you're searching for this. Let me see if I got this here. Uh, so a couple things here, uh, like you can go to Wikipedia or right here on YouTube and you can actually put in like the name of the TV show and the specific episode you're looking for. So if we want to watch like The Simpsons season one, episode one, we can go to Wikipedia or we can even go on YouTube here, uh, especially if the TV show is popular and then we can get more information about that. So we can learn the story. Uh, and so one of the things that you will find, like if you're you know, using a keyword search, you're looking for this information. So you can look for the story. So what is the story or what is the plot? So the plot, this is another word for just what's happening uh, in the story. So again, if you're searching for something like that, we're looking for this information here. Let me move these down. So again, we choose the content. So if you want to watch The Simpsons or some other show, whatever that is, and then we want to find out lots of information about that episode, all right? So the more popular the show, the more, you know, like the easier it will be to find information about it. Uh, and of course, you can go on YouTube as well. YouTube is great because you can also look for people who are telling about the story or the plot, or they will give you a summary. A summary of the show, all right? So we want to get information, and this will be, again, a really nice way to get naturally varied review, where people are talking about the show, they will explain about characters and story beats. So a story beat, story beat. Just like a drum, like beat, 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 beat. So if I have the story beat, like first this happens, then this happens, then this happens, then this happens. So these are the beats of the story. So people will explain this information because maybe some people, even native speakers, they don't have time to watch lots of TV shows, so they just want to know what happens. So they will go to YouTube and they will say, or type in to, to search for, for maybe a summary or what is the plot of you know, a, a TV show. And you can do this with movies, uh, excuse me, you can do this with books as well, the same kind of thing. The point is we're looking for information from native speakers that are talking about the TV show, all right? And so often these will have uh, some kind of subtitles as well, so you can follow that, but these will be general uh, plots. Uh, another word that you'll find for this is synopsis, S-Y-N, synops synopsis synopsis. So what is the synopsis? What is the plot? What is the summary uh, of the TV show? Make sure people are following me over here. So people are asking, do I recommend turning on subtitles? Yes, uh, you can certainly watch with subtitles. I watch Japanese TV shows with subtitles as well, but I recommend you do this in English. So you're getting the movie or TV show with subtitles in English rather than doing it uh, in your native language. So we don't want to be like captioned for uh, for your for your native language. If you don't understand it, you should probably pick something easier. But often uh, it's good to have the subtitles so you can really understand what people um, people are people are saying. All right. But everybody understands like so far how we're doing this. So we're kind of making a funnel here before we get to the content. So we begin with something quite broad. So we're we're picking some kind of topic. And then we're going down, just getting, okay, we chose a TV show. Now we want to get more information about that. So we want to have uh, like information about uh, the, the, the plot or the characters. And so you can get a lot of that information, especially if the show is popular. All right? If it's a uh, not well-known show, you will probably not find much information about it. But usually you can get, uh, especially on Wikipedia, you will get lots of information about the show. All right? Hopefully... This makes sense, all right? So these are all the things that you'll learn. Again, we want to really take time with one episode. We don't want to watch one five minute clip of a TV show and learn two or three phrases and forget them, all right? If you're going to do it, you should do it well, but this is the fun, easy way to do it, and it's fun. You will enjoy it because you will understand more and more as you go through, and then when you finally get to the TV show itself, it will be very enjoyable for you.
All right, so you will understand more, you will recognize more because you're prepared for it. All right, it's the preparation that really makes the show enjoyable, even if you know what's happening. All right, because really you don't quite know what people are going to say or how exactly they're going to do it. So there still will be surprises for you to make the show enjoyable. But also you want to see, uh, do people know or are people using the vocabulary that you learned up here? So as you're getting a story summary at this level, then you will recognize like, okay, this character does this. Then you see them do that in the show and you think, wow, look at that. I was, I was able to prepare myself for that and I understand it a lot more, okay? So I'm spending time uh, talking about this, but I think everybody understands what I mean, all right? Pretty easy. All right, so we have uh, like other words. Let me give you some other words over here you can use as you search for things like this on YouTube or whatever. So especially, uh, I talked about choosing the particular content. So if we're choosing the content, you can, again, you have two choices for TV shows, something that has a long arc with individual episodes, and you have to watch each one of those to know the whole story, or you can watch a different show where it's just each episode is its own story. You don't need to watch more than one. You can just focus on one. So if you want to watch something that has a longer arc, then you will spend more time up here looking for the summary of the whole season or even of the whole show. Okay, so you still want to get that information, but again, the point is to understand the story and the general plot, the general idea about the characters, who they are, what are they doing, and again, it's, it's much easier to get this information first so you're prepared for everything when you get to the conversation or the, uh, the movie or TV show in this case. All right, so here are some other quick words you can use that native speakers are also using when they search for content. Okay, so we might have a retro, a retrospective, retrospective. A retrospective is usually information about like a whole TV show where someone is, is like talking about the whole series and what they like about it. It's like a review, so similar to a review. But typically, a, a retrospective, they, they, people spend more time going into detail about different things. They talk about film theories or TV show theories, other things like that. So a, if you're looking for a, uh, like a retrospective about a movie or about a TV show or about a video game or about a book, you can usually find information, especially about popular things that have been out for a while. So if it's like really new information, like a new movie just comes out, you will probably not find a retrospective about it. But something older, like Game of Thrones or something, where, where the whole TV series has finished. So Game of Thrones is already finished. Lost is already finished. Friends is already finished, all right? But if you're looking for a retrospective, that's going to give you a lot of information similar to a review where a person is giving you, they're giving you information about that show, but they're also giving you their personal information as well. And usually this is like pretty easy to follow because they will often have clips from the TV show showing things, all right? So an example, uh, yesterday I was watching, uh, I have not seen the new, the new episodes for this season of Yellowstone. So I had watched uh, many, I don't know if I watched all of them, but many of the episodes from the older four seasons of Yellowstone, but there are already like, uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a retrospective in that sense. Another word you can search for is a recap. So I'm looking for a recap, which is like, tell me what happened. All right. So I can use this when searching for something, or I can also use this word when talking to a friend and he tells me a story like, hey, I went to a camping trip and I did this and this and this, he's giving me a recap. He's giving me a recap. So he's telling me what happened. He's giving me a summary of the story, a recap. So you can, again, these are just different words you can use like review or recap when we want to find out more information about the story. All right, I'm spending a little bit more time talking about number two because, again, if you have really good foundation, if you're well prepared for the show, you will enjoy it a lot more. All right, any questions about that? It looks like, all right, it looks like everybody's okay. All right, so moving on, uh, after we're getting like the story about that thing, we want to move like a slightly closer level. 
Let me erase all this over here. So again, you can use blogs. It doesn't necessarily have to be YouTube videos, but those are a great way to be prepared. Uh, plus get lots of actual video footage from the show with people talking about it, all right? And again, we're looking for content created by native speakers for native speakers. And so if you're going to watch an episode of Breaking Bad or, or whatever the show is, then you would try to find a few different recaps of that show. So many people will make content about a particular show, try to watch a few different things from different people talking about the same show. Okay, again, this is how you prepare yourself. So don't just get one plot summary, get three, four, or five. And each time you do that, you're getting naturally varied review. You're getting that, that information naturally the same way natives do. Often people who are interested in something may watch like, you know, five different shows that are talking about basically the same information. All right, so you will hear some information. I've given this uh, example before, uh, like when I did my naturally varied review video about uh, making an espresso. So I showed four different people making espresso, so four different videos of that. So the first one you watch, maybe you learn some new vocabulary, but you don't really remember it very well. But then you watch another video about making espresso, and wow, a lot of that vocabulary was the same. And so you remember this information even better, and you learn some new things as well, but this information in particular, uh, wow, you really feel a lot more confident. But yet again, you watch another person talking about how to make espresso, and look at that, they're using these same words, and there are some other things that maybe these two people used, and then these two people, and then you watch another one. Again, you will notice how to make espresso from a couple of different people and there's some things that are used by everyone and that information you will feel really good about, you will understand it very well, you will be prepared and it's the preparation that makes you feel good. All right? Hopefully no, uh, everybody understands what I'm talking about here. Again, I'll go back, I'm checking the chat but I want to make sure everybody understands. I think everybody's got me uh, so far, okay? So uh, after we understand that, we're right now we're looking for commentary. So this is people, we're not just trying to get like a recap or a plot synopsis, you know, something where we're just getting information like what is the story. We want to hear commentary about the information, so commentary about the TV show or about the movie or book or whatever. Uh, and again, this is, it's still going to be giving us more of this information, but from a different perspective. So we want to hear different people talking about the same show. Okay, you probably do this already in your native language. Maybe you're watching something. You might even do it in English for the things that you really like learning about. So if you have a hobby, uh, maybe you enjoy fishing or watercolor painting or whatever, you will probably watch many different people talking about that thing. And it's naturally building your fluency. It's naturally teaching you lots of information. So lots of vocabulary, grammar, and it's giving you examples of how these things work. All right. So we're looking for commentary here. Uh, this is a slightly deeper level where we really want to understand more, like what do people think about this information? So we have not watched the TV show yet at this point. We're still just getting information about it. But you get more and more excited to watch the show and to see everything because you've now seen lots of people talking about it, understanding it. Maybe you've uh, read something online about it somewhere, even in a, like an actual magazine. There might be something like that you can read. Okay, so we want to get commentary and we might even be looking for things like Easter eggs. Does anyone here know what an Easter egg is? You might already have that. Let's see, I'm going to check chat to see if anybody knows what this phrase here. What is an Easter egg? And do you know what one is? All right, let me look back uh, through chat right here, make sure I'm not going too fast for people. All right, here, let's see. All right, so people were asking me about subtitles. We need to choose something that we really like. That way we're going to be able to uh, establish some stronger connection with that. Yes, uh, Aline, then uh, absolutely. So if you don't like the information, you're probably not going to enjoy it. So it's important to pick something you will likely enjoy. All right, uh, let's see. It could be something like a movie we already know. Yes, and so that's another thing where you, you could apply this same process to content you have already seen. 
So maybe you watched a movie, and this is a thing like learners will do in Fluent for Life. So we have a similar system like this where you begin, uh, you could begin with the conversation itself. And if you watch it, you might be overwhelmed. There might be lots of information that you don't understand. But if you go back through the steps, then you get to the conversation again, and it's much easier to understand. Or uh, in a similar way, it might be some movie uh, or TV show that you saw when you were a child. And so maybe you don't understand a lot of the information or you watched it in your native language. So people here in Japan, maybe they watch a movie uh, that, like it was, you know, some movie from their childhood and they watched it in Japanese. And so they can, you know, they get the like the dubbed version of it uh, rather than watching it in English. And so now they understand the plot pretty well, but they could go back and watch it. Uh, in, uh, in English. Now, I recommend you do this whole process in English uh, rather than try to take your native language and learn about it. The whole point is even if you don't understand, just like the uh, espresso video, even if you don't understand the first time you see something, if you watch a few people talking about it, you will naturally understand more. So don't feel bad if you don't like, if there's still some things you don't understand, try giving yourself more related information. This is why naturally varied review is so important rather than just trying to use uh, translations. All right. So I think we have, all right, let's see. So friends, yeah, people are talking about friends over here. I t have a tendency to talk fast, and that's why my fluency gets messed up. The reason I talk fast is because I have so many things to say. Uh, I tend to stumble over words. What is your advice? Uh, my advice would be to slow down. You know, it's like me. I could, I could speak, you know, two or three times faster than I'm speaking right now, but I, I regulate my speech, so I'm not speaking too quickly for people. All right, I have a B1 level now. Watch uh, the Vikings. Uh, maybe all that Viking TV show. Subtitles in English. Honestly, it's difficult. Uh, can I continue or give up or choose another movie? Yes. So again, you should pick something that you feel comfortable with. You should understand at least 80 to 90% of the content already. That way, any new information you can understand just from the context. All right. If you only understand 50% or, or less, then you are probably going to be struggling with that. It will not be enjoyable for you. Uh, so remember, choose wisely. You must choose wisely. All right. Let's see if anybody had, let's see, an Easter egg. What? So someone had, yes. So Easter eggs, you know, this obviously comes from Easter uh, where people are, are hiding little eggs and looking or little kids are going out and trying to find them. Uh, but yes, let's see, Stremel. Oh, one Easter egg is like some kind of hidden secret on a video game that has plenty of Easter eggs. Yes. So an Easter egg is something that the, the creators of the show or the director or something like that, and yes, it could be in a video game, it could be in a movie or something, uh, but these are usually some kind of cultural reference or something where, like it could be a, a TV show for kids, but there are Easter eggs for parents in the show. So people watch a show and like there's some, like it's like the name of a character is from something that little kids would not know, but the parents do know. All right. So when we're looking for commentary about that thing, you can search specifically for like Easter eggs in and then the name of your show. Or you could say like, like Breaking Bad Easter eggs. And so these are, again, things that you would look for before you watch. It. This is kind of like speed running the culture a little bit. So it will tell you like this Easter egg is about this thing. And that came from like, you know, some old movie or something like that. And then you will get the reference as well. All right. Again, the preparation is everything when we prepare for something like this. So if it's just like a little kid's show, they might have actually lots of Easter eggs. I mean, I notice uh, especially like slightly more difficult TV shows, even something like Peppa Pig for kids, they will actually have uh, kind of jokes or other things for adults. All right. So little kids might watch it but not understand, but the parents do. All right. So this is another interesting thing uh, you can do. Let's see. So Easter egg. Okay, everybody got that already. All right. So we could we could be like we're looking for commentary, and when we're searching for this, it's like thoughts thoughts about or discussion discussion about. Again, these are words you can use when you search on like a search engine for text or if you're looking on YouTube for information. So we could be talking about that or like my take on. These are all native, natural ways of expressing how we talk about something. 
So we might say, uh, like, I want to watch, like, you know, someone's take on Breaking Bad or someone's take on a movie, whatever that is, all right, your take. So you can ask someone, like, what's your take on that? It just means what do you think about that? What's your opinion about that? What do you believe is happening? All right, similarly, you might have, like, a theory. So a theory about something. So often people will watch a TV show and they don't know exactly what's going to happen. And so people will have theories about the show. So what's your theory about that? All right. Again, these are all things where we're looking for commentary about that particular show. I promise you, if you go through this process, it actually is more fun because you're learning more and you're understanding more each time you do it. If you go directly to the TV show, there's a lot you're going to miss. Even native speakers, you know, they might watch a show and not really pay attention and not understand lots of little things in the show. But if you prepare for it, you will. Okay? Everybody got that. What's the difference between Easter eggs and a plot twist? All right. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, so a plot twist. So again, we have the plot. You can imagine like the plot moving like this. So the audience thinks like, oh, here's like an evil guy. Like this guy has an evil face. So it looks like he's the bad guy, but what plot twist, it's actually uh, this other really nice looking guy is really the, the bad person in the show. That's a plot twist. So a twist, what is the twist in the show? We're not moving in this straight direction. We're going to change in some way and move in a different direction. That's the twist in that thing, the plot twist. All right, so good question. Another thing noticed about this like plot twist how the sounds blend together, you'll hear it as like plot twist. We don't say the T twice. We don't say plot twist. It's just plot twist, plot twist, plot twist. Okay. So an Easter egg is just like a hidden secret in a TV show. Usually it's for people who really know something like you might have, uh, like, especially right now, there are a lot of, uh, like a reboot. So a reboot, uh, is where we take a TV show and make it again, like like the Ghostbusters movie. We take like like instead of having the story continue with the same characters, we we like make it again. Like the Little Mermaid or whatever is like a reboot. Uh, it's just a retelling of the same thing. And so you have you know you make it in modern times or you change it in some way. That's a reboot of the story. Uh, and so if you're, if you're learning, and this is like another good way, obviously, to, to learn with TV shows as well. You might watch like a TV show that was created like in the 1980s, like Thundercats. And then you can watch an updated version when the show was rebooted. All right. So we might have Easter eggs like from the old TV show now or in the new TV show. And so like older people who are watching that will say, hey, I remember that character from 20 years ago. <laughs> And so it's, it's really hard for non-native speakers or even native speakers who don't know anything about the show. So young kids who are watching a cartoon now that's, that's like from a, a previous, it's, it's a reboot or they're remaking the TV show. Uh, so the young kids might not, not understand those references. They might not understand those Easter eggs, but parents will get them. Okay, so that's the difference. All right, I think everybody's on the same page. All right. So again, we're looking for commentary. Uh, we're looking for thoughts about or discussion or theory or my take on something. So look for like my take on something. And if you search for these things, you will find native speakers who are talking about this information. And then try to get a few of them. Usually these videos are not very long. You can watch like a few five minute videos all talking about the same thing. I promise you, you will feel much more confident about that information. All right, people getting excited about this or not really, not really. You guys should be a bit more excited about this. Remember, this is the kind of easy way to learn and then forget what you learn. All right, so you could watch a bunch of different clips about different TV shows and then never learn to use that information. Or you can just pick one TV show and get a whole bunch of information about it and get fluent in that automatically. All right, so you don't need to practice speaking with anyone to go through this process. So very simple. So we've got steps one, two, and three. Next four, pretty easy. Read the transcript of the show. Read the transcript. Read the transcript. 
All right, now this seems like a simple thing. You can probably find this information as well. Uh, people were asking about subtitles before, which I also recommend, but usually watching subtitles while you're trying to enjoy a TV show, it can be a little bit more difficult. You're trying to read at the bottom of the screen while you pay attention to what's happening. It can be a little bit frustrating. Uh, so I recommend you read the transcript at least once before the show. It shouldn't take you very long, especially like a, a regular TV show. It's only 20 minutes or half an hour, and you can go through that pretty quickly. All right, so this will also help you understand what the characters are saying. Again, everything is about preparation. So that when we get to step five, where we actually watch the show, all right? Now we're finally at that stage, boom, down here. So we've gone through picking the content. We wanna understand the story. We wanna get some people talking about it. We want to hear their thoughts, their takes on that information. We want to read the transcript so we really understand clearly what specific words and phrases are being used. Now this is where it's a little bit tricky if you're by yourself. You should probably be prepared a little bit for this because you've already heard many words and phrases uh, generally, uh, if we're watching things about like Easter eggs and the synopsis or the whatever happens in the show. Uh, but this will give you a lot of vocabulary. You can look things up if you still don't know what they are. Again, this is the benefit of learning with someone like me who can tell you what the vocabulary is. These are the kinds of things we do uh, in Fluent for Life. But again, you can easily do them by yourself. It just takes a little bit more time. Uh, but this will help you prepare as you go through these steps. You finally get to the TV show, so watch the show. All right, so now we finally get to the, uh, we could call this the end of the process. I actually recommend you go back and do the whole thing again. And what you will find is that, wow, like if you, if you, and this is why, again, it's really important to find something that you enjoy because you will want to know more about that. You will want to know what happens to the characters or what people think, or what do you think will happen in the next episode, that kind of thing. Uh, so this, this process, you can do it again and again, even with the same show, and you will learn more each time you do it. And this is how you can get fluent. So you will become more knowledgeable, uh, you will feel more prepared, you will feel more confident because you really understand the vocabulary, the story, a lot of the cultural references that you're getting from the TV show, just because you focused on one thing. All right, so I promise if you take time, this is a really good way to do it. And then if you go back and watch again these other things, this will make even more sense. You will understand even more of what other people are talking about and then maybe you have your own theories about that. You can go to blogs and read comments about different things as well. The same kind of idea. But the point is, spend time with the information, all right? But you don't wanna just repeat something again and again. It's much better to learn this way than to try to watch the same TV show like three or four times, all right? You might understand a little bit more, but it's much easier to be prepared for all these things so that when you get to the TV show itself, you can just enjoy that and learn a lot from it, all right? So even if you spoil some information about it, it's okay, you will still enjoy the show a lot more. All right, see if it makes sense. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a fun exercise, says Eileen. Yeah, uh, the best part ever, we don't need a person to practice English, so we enjoy this stuff. Uh, study a transcript after then we should make a shadowing with the thing. Yes, you can try speaking with the people as well, but really the most important thing is just to understand the content. So when you understand really well, remember that uh, you, are, you are spending most of your day probably not speaking. So whether it's your native language or in English, most of the information, like right now, you're not speaking with me, you're just listening to what I'm saying and you're learning because I've got some visual examples and I'm writing things on the board up here, uh, but you're not speaking. And my job is to make the language understandable and try to teach things in a way so you feel confident about using them yourself. But you didn't get fluent because you were saying anything, you got more fluent because you understood the language very well. So yes, that's an excellent point. Uh, the whole point is, is to understand the information. Let me know, did anybody here watching this video watch the espresso video I made. Let me know if anybody watched that. Uh, I don't have a link for that in the description below this video, but you can find that on the channel. I think it's the one of the most recent, uh, it's not a live video, but uh, one of the most recent videos on the channel. So if you have not watched that one, you should definitely watch it, and it will give you a good example of how this works. 
So you can apply the same system of getting naturally varied review to lots of different content, but this is how you would do it with TV shows. Now TV shows can be particularly difficult because you're getting fast speech and difficult accents and natural vocabulary and natural vocabulary has idioms and phrasal verbs and cultural references and all these things are coming at you at the same time. So it can be quite overwhelming. And even if you understand that information, you really need time to process it and that's why we go through these steps. So if you want to use that information, so even if you can understand a lot of TV shows, if you don't yet speak as well as the people on TV, go ahead and do this exercise. All right, pick even one show. You can pick, you know, like it's maybe the show is only 20, 20 minutes or 30 minutes long, but I promise if you go through these steps, find even two or three examples. Read a synopsis, read a plot outline, read the story on Wikipedia or wherever, and then listen to one or two people talking about it before the show and then watch the show. Even something that simple will help you get prepared and feel much more confident about it. All right, let's see. All right, hopefully that makes sense uh, over here. All right, so let me go back through chat. This is the basic process that I would recommend people go through. So instead of trying to learn like two or three, um, you know, vocabulary words or phrases or something from a short clip, take time. You will actually understand the whole episode if you go through this process. All right, I promise you. All right, so let's look at chat. Uh, let's see if we have anybody over here. That's the video. Let's see. Thank you. Get ready for spoilers. Yes, and it's okay. The point is not like you, you are watching the, the TV show for a slightly different purpose. You really want to kind of analyze it like a scientist. You want to think like, oh, yeah, like I know there's going to be a, a scene where one character surprises another character. So I know that scene is going to happen. I'm prepared for it, but I don't know exactly what they're going to say. So really it's focusing on the vocabulary and the, the kind of cultural references and things. And you might not even understand everything, but you will understand a lot more if you go through this process. All right. So don't worry about spoiling things. There's still a lot of new information that you will be ready for uh, and that you will be excited. But you will be a lot more prepared for it and it will be easier to understand. All right. So don't feel bad about spoilers. All right. I watched the video with espresso. Glad to hear it, Tatiana. All right. What well, peace and love do you from Osaka? Hey, Osaka, you do. The samurai prayer. Nihonji? Japanese or just in Osaka? Uh, all right. Yes. So we have a, let's, let's see, the most beautiful thing in your video uh, that you read the comments. Yes, I love, uh, I'm watching live for the first time. Yes. So I wanted to make a video at a different time today. So I usually uh, lately have been making videos Thursday morning, Japan time, but now it's the afternoon. So I don't have a lot of time today, but I thought I would do it at a different time to, you know, for other people to enjoy it. Again, you can watch these videos anytime you like, but I thought I might get some different people on here and mix this up a little bit. So try something at a different time. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Seda, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm struggling with making, with make a sentences when I am writing. What is your recommendation? Uh, watch the previous, I think, two videos I did live uh, where I was talking about how to make sentences and there, there was actually a specific video I made. Uh, when was that? Maybe a few weeks ago that was talking about how to make fluent sentences. A lot of, so there, there are some mistakes in your grammar and that will make it more difficult for you to, to try to make longer sentences. Often learners are trying to say something much more advanced. Uh, when you could use something much easier. And also you want to make sure you're using correct grammar when you're writing. And so even me, I like to go back and review a lot of the basics about Japanese just to refresh myself. And each time I go back, I'm like, oh, look at that. Here's like, here's an interesting exception. Or here's another thing where now I really get some basic thing that I didn't get before. So a lot of people who can understand English, but they can't speak very well, remember these are two different skills. So a lot of people who watch my videos can understand me easily, but they have trouble communicating themselves. And this is because, again, they're just not really uh, as familiar with the language as they should be. So people are often getting lots of just random uh, videos, they're not really learning the language systematically and you have to spend time learning it systematically. All right. So it's much easier if you find something you enjoy and then really learn that a lot. And the great thing about this is that if you do this, 
you will learn this vocabulary which you can then use when talking about other things. Okay? So maybe I watch a TV show about something, it's maybe a TV show about sports, but I can use that same vocabulary when talking about relationships or business or, I don't know, medicine or whatever. All right? You can cross use a lot of these different things. All right, so don't feel bad if you're, if you're focusing on something like you're, you're wasting your time or you should be learning, like trying to learn a lot of different things. That's not how you become a fluent speaker. You become fluent in certain information that you focus on, all right? And this is why in Fluent for Life, we take people through this process over a month. So you can get fluent in 30 days in this information and then even though you're learning about dating or medicine or animals or whatever, you take that vocabulary and then you can use it when talking about other things. Very easy, all right? But you have to focus on something and get fluent in those things one at a time. All right, uh, let's see. Alcides says, uh, or Alcides, is this really live? Yes, it is currently live if you are watching it live. Or maybe you're watching this later and it is not live, all right? Let's see. Yes, it is really live. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Namaste, sir. I've been watching your knowledgeable video for two months, but today I am watching you live. It's great. Glad to hear it. All right. Let's see. See if anybody else has any questions about this. So if you have, uh, even if it's not questions about this specifically, I'll have a few minutes uh, now that I can take to answer these questions. But are you getting this? If you watch this video and you watch the video about uh, the books that you should read and about the uh, movies, you will, you will see a, a trend, a pattern in this. The people who get fluent are the people who focus on something. All right. The point is to understand the information really well. Uh, and as uh, Aileen said uh, earlier, if you can do this, you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to speak with people because the input is the thing that really gets you fluent, all right? To the, the understandable messages. So when you watch something or you're in a conversation and you listen to people and you're like, wow, I really understood what that person said, all right? And not just like you heard them, but you're like, ah, I understood that cultural reference or something. That's where you feel great and you know, ah, okay, that's an example of how I can use something in a conversation and you're learning all of this stuff so that when you do speak, you will speak more fluently. All right, you will feel confident because you're prepared. All of this is about preparation. If you feel confident because you know information, like a lot of the people uh, that I help, maybe they are talking with people at work uh, and they can describe maybe their, like their technical information. So if you are a lawyer uh, and you need to talk about legal things, you probably know that vocabulary very well because you've talked about it a lot. But if your coworker asks you about you know, some party or something outside of work, maybe you're not prepared for that. So you don't feel as confident about speaking about it, all right? And so this is why we want to prepare you, all right? The more prepared, the preparation is what builds the fluency. All right, uh, I obtained a job at DCL as a youth counselor, as a PE teacher. I'm looking for resources to find games and recreational activities in English. I want to enhance my ability to explain games effectively. You mean, you mean like physical games, like games you could do with kids or something like that? So you can do like exactly what we're talking about here if you want to find out more information about games. Go on YouTube, like right where we are, and look up, you know, kids games or whatever. And you can be specific, physical games or board games or something uh, where you're looking for, you know, card games. And it will teach you lots of different things and you will see lots of different people talking about that. Of course, there's also video games like Frederick, which you can click on the link in the description below this video to get. Um, and that's where you're learning English all in English. So that's another thing you can do to uh, improve your listening and pronunciation. All right, uh, any other questions? I think maybe I skipped some stuff up at the top. Let's see here. All right. All right, hopefully, I think I got everybody. A lot of people, yeah, I didn't want to, uh, like, take time to go through and, like, say hello, but it's, it's really great to see people from all over the world, especially some new faces. So listen, like, I see some new faces. That's a great way to talk about new people. I see some new faces in the chat that I, uh, I'm not used to. Let's see. All right, good morning from London. Yes, can't believe you are alive when I'm awake. <laughs> yes, so I wanted to make sure, again, I'm trying, uh, going live at a different time. We'll see what happens next week. It will probably be the usual time 
Uh, but again, you can watch the, uh, watch the video after the fact. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see. Does anybody have any more questions, like anything I did not cover about TV shows or if you want recommendations or something? Really, you can find any TV shows that are good. Uh, if you have a, a slightly lower level, I recommend English kids shows. So I talked about Peppa Pig before. Sesame Street, like older episodes of Sesame Street are good. Um, and another nice thing about Sesame Street uh, is, is because it's trying to teach language and culture to, til to children, you will learn those same things. So they will focus on like one letter or one number or something and kind of like a commercial, they will say today's episode is brought to you by the letter T. You know, like the letter T is sponsoring the show. And so they'll have a couple of different videos or little sections of the program about the letter T. Uh, like, T, like you know, shows with T in it or something like that, like the, like the letter T. All right. Again, they're, they're trying to give uh, kids naturally varied review. They want to, and most of the, like the popular books that you see for little kids, it's just some kind of variation on something. Like, I've, uh, like I showed in the, uh, the These Books Get You Fluent video. All right. Uh, let's see. Why the phrasal verb bring up has a lot of meanings. That's a good question. Um, so phrasal verbs can have many meanings because they could have, you know, it just depends on the situation. But to bring something up, typically we can think about it physically, like I'm bringing something up, like if I'm carrying something from a lower floor to a higher one, so I'm carrying this marker. If my mom asks, hey, can you bring up a marker? Can I bring up some food or can I do that? Can I physically lift it to a higher level? But I might also like bring up an idea. It's like, whoa, look at that. I like brought up, whoa, I brought up an idea. Like I'm like thinking about kind of, it's like physically coming up, you know, out of my head. So I'm bringing something up. So a person might be in a conversation, might bring up something. Like I'm talking about, I don't know, going to dinner and a friend of mine brings up I don't know, going on vacation or something like that. So he might change the subject uh, or whatever, but you're bringing something up. So it could be like physically bringing it up, like you bring up your children, you raise them over time. So often, uh, like the way I teach verbs, uh, phrasal verbs in the visual guide to phrasal verbs, we're beginning with something that's physical that you can see and understand, and then we look at the more figurative uses of that. All right, so just like, physically bringing up and like raising children, same kind of thing, all right? So the more you learn it like a native, the easier it will be for you to understand and use for yourself. All right, I found that just repeating English when learning, even if people don't totally understand what they say, that helps. Yes, you can certainly repeat things. Uh, repetition is a little, I, I, should, I should do like a science experiment about this just to prove people uh, how much better this is, but naturally varied review like Anybody who tries this uh, will easily see. I could take the same phrase and repeat it 10 times, or I could hear that same phrase spoken by 10 different people. All right, so if there's some variation on that, uh, my brain is, is more likely to be interested in that. And so I will listen to it more, I will remember it, I will absorb it more. So repetition is good, but naturally varied review is better because it keeps you interested in that information. And not only that, it's really trying to give you lots of different ways of understanding something. So the more chances you get to understand something, the better. And often that comes from slightly different angles of something. So as an example, maybe I'm angry at my child. And there's a couple of different ways I could say that. I could say, you know, I'm really upset. I'm really upset. And I'm very angry. I'm really disappointed. And I don't know what I'm going to do. All right, there's going to be trouble. There are different ways I can express this same idea. And so rather than hearing just one person and they repeat that same thing again and again, what kids are doing is they're listening to lots of different people talking about things about that same situation. And so the repetition is there, but they're still getting slight variation for that. The variation is key. All right. It helps you understand things and it keeps you more interested. All right. Let's see. Thanks for the videos. I always enjoy them. Glad to hear it. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Any questions about... Uh, let's see. All right. Teacher, can you clear one confusion? What does I have had to send her mean? It should either mean I have to send her or I had to send her. Well, you're just talking about, you should watch, go, watch, rather than me explain like all the steps in this, 
watch the video I, I have about the, the, the word have. <laughs> So I, I talk about this and explain these different, these different steps. So it's, it's not really that complicated or confusing if you learn them in the right way. So watch that video and it explains that. So basic, the basic idea of that video is you're talking about an experience, all right? So do I have the experience of, of like doing something? So like I'm, right now I am teaching you something, all right? But in the past, maybe I was teaching also. So I have that experience, all right? So I have taught. Like I have the experience of teaching, all right? So I have taught before, all right? But rather than go like into detail about it, that's how you should be thinking about it like a native. But it's just like this thing that you are doing, it's an experience. So it's now a part of you, all right? So like I am Drew and I have certain, certain features or certain things about me. So I have... I don't know, like I have green eyes or I have black hair, I have, you know, blue teeth or something. So I have these things, but also experiences are part of me. That's like part of who I am. So I have taught. So in the past, there were times like when I, when I have taught. Okay, so I have, I have had like a particular experience before. All right, so that's how you can think about that. But watch that video because I spend a lot more time going into detail uh, about that. Uh, YouTube Kids is great. Yes, so you can watch, uh, obviously, lots of stuff on uh, YouTube for kids as well. Let's see. No question, teacher. It is so excellent lesson. Again, you would say such an excellent lesson. And this is another thing as you get naturally a varied review. Again, thank you for the comment, but, you know, whenever I see things, I'd like to uh, help correct people. These are the kinds of things that you, that you, you develop. You develop a sense for what's correct over time as you hear things again and again. This is a common uh, mistake that learners will make, uh, the difference between so and such. And it's rather than trying to memorize a rule for it, it's just hearing lots of examples that makes it a lot easier to understand. So like, uh, like this is such, is such a good lesson. All right, so you will hear a kind of format, or a, again, I just call them language patterns, and little kids hear these things. It's like such a good, such a great, such an amazing, okay? It's like such an amazing thing, all right? Or we could use like this lesson is so good. You're saying the same thing, but these are two different patterns, all right? So this is such a good lesson, or this is such a great restaurant. This is such a useful thing. This marker is so useful. So this marker is so useful. And again, if you, if you go to Google or chat GPT or whatever, you can get lots of naturally varied review about specific vocabulary. So this is such a useful thing, uh, or this is so useful. So again, thank you for the comment, but whenever I see these things, like it's little grammar errors like this that will cause you to doubt, am I saying that correctly? Or am I about to say something? And you start to think like, which is correct? Like, should I say such or so? Or, and it's that kind of doubt that causes you to lack, uh, like basically you lack confidence. And so, you know, nobody, even little kids, wants to speak when they don't want to, or if they're worried about saying something incorrect. All right, so if they say something incorrectly, uh, oh, the lesson is so good. So you should try to get many examples of just that one thing. And this happens to me too. If I'm trying to, if I'm, if I have any doubt in my mind about like a particular grammar point or vocabulary, I know that I'm not fluent in that yet. And I should go back and review it. Just like we're talking about with this TV show, it's the focus, the naturally varied review that gets you fluent. So it's not me repeating that over and over again. I want to get like a hundred different examples of this language pattern. And if you do that, then you will naturally feel more confident about using it because you're like, oh yeah, like I recognize that. I know that language pattern. So you get fluent in that language pattern and then you get fluent in another one and another one and another one. And over time, that's what builds your overall fluency. But you get fluent word by word or phrase by phrase as you learn them fluently. So recognize, like, if you make a mistake about something, go back and, you know, you should catch yourself and think, ah, okay, let me, let me use something in a different way. All right, but again, thank you very much. 
Uh, so watch all of your videos. You explain very clearly and good. So again, you would explain things well. You explain things well. So we do something well. So you eat well, you live well, you do something easily. Uh, we do it well. All right, Charles Miller. Well, look at that, Charles is back. Been a while, waking up at 4 a.m. in Brazil to watch the live. Aha, uh -huh, yes, uh, Fluent for Life member over there. Nice to see you, Charles. Uh, let's see, Tatiana, do you know where is teacher? Like, do you know where the teacher is? Do you know where the teacher is? So you all might be surprised. A lot of people think they need to learn more difficult English to become fluent. If you can't speak fluently yet, your problem is not trying to learn more vocabulary. Don't try to learn more. I talk about that in, a, in like maybe last week's video, I think. Maybe on Monday I talked about that. So if you want to become fluent, stop learning more words. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like a weird idea because people think they need to learn more words to get fluent. But you don't get fluent by learning more words. You get fluent by focusing on words and really understanding that. And then you can use it. All right, so get fluent word by word, phrase by phrase as you really understand the content. Then you will speak correctly. You will feel much more confident about that. Uh, let's see. Do you have a video about present perfect versus past? Uh, you can search our channel for that. Uh, I think maybe our beginning English playlist might have that. Uh, we do cover these things in Fluent for Life as well uh, in lots of detail. Let's see. Do you ever have a chance to do this live show after like... Uh, oh, like 8 o'clock, Japan Standard Time, maybe too late for you. Uh, I've never tried that. I, I don't know. It would, it would probably be kind of late for me over here. So I don't shoot these at home. I, I like happen to be out at like a kind of co-working space that I can use uh, to shoot these videos. Uh, and this place is open until 10 o'clock, so I could do that, but that would be pretty late. But I will see. Maybe I will try making videos at different times and, and see what's, what's convenient for me. Uh, so, so far I've been doing them, but remember, you don't have to watch the video live to benefit from it. You can watch it later. You can watch it anytime. You can watch it while I'm asleep, <laughs> and then you can enjoy it. All right, it's my first time on the stream. I'm from Russia. It's amazing. Glad to hear it. Nice to see you. If you know anyone else uh, who would enjoy this, please recommend them, uh, recommend they join us. Also, click like. If you did not click the like button, click the like button now. This tells Google and YouTube, like, hey, you should tell more people about this. So I should watch the little, the little thumb like go up right now. Everybody, click on the like. That's the one thing I like about Instagram. You get those little hearts that float up. And I want some hearts over here. Well, somebody clicked. Somebody else click, 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 click. There we go. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Thanks for the lesson. I must go to work now. Hopefully, I'll be able to join your live stream again in the future. Very good. Nice to see you, Maria. Yeah. Uh, again, remember, if you don't watch them live, you can watch them later. Uh, same here. Vikrant says, sir, you speak such good English. How you got so fluent in it? So how did you get, how did you get so fluent? All right. Now, part of this is me being a native English speaker, but I really want to make it clear what a native English speaker is. A native English speaker is someone who learns English as a first language rather than someone who's learning English through another language. So I didn't become fluent in English because I lived in the United States. I am from the United States, uh, and I didn't become fluent because I was a child. I became fluent because people gave me understandable messages all in English. So people were able to teach me things and explain things to me all in English. So I didn't learn English through Chinese or through Japanese or anything. I learned it all in English, and that's why I teach all in English. So when I had a conversation with some Japanese people before this video, so I was speaking for about half an hour, talking with a couple of different people about what I do and how I teach, and I might be able to like talk with a lady on NHK, about, that's like the Japan broadcasting, so I was talking with her about what, what I do. She was like, wow, you have a million subscribers. <laughs> I said, yeah, we should do a TV show or something, so maybe we'll see about that. But what's great is I can do this all in Japanese. Uh, and so you get fluent over time because you learn the language in that language. So even though I'm in Japan, when I'm actually teaching people, I teach them all in English. Uh, but that's part of the reason I'm probably not very popular in Japan uh, is because I don't use Japanese to teach English, and I know a lot of people are still trying to learn English uh, through Japanese. Uh, but this is the same thing uh, in, in any country, really. 
Uh, let's see. Thank you for answering my question. Also, I think somebody asked before about like a discount on Fluent for Life. We may do that again later. Uh, if you missed it, I apologize. We might have those available. Also, we're probably going to raise the price of the program uh, just so we can like attract people who are like even uh, like more serious about learning. Like if you if you like make the price of the program really cheap, then often a lot of people join and don't actually follow the program, which is quite disappointing. So we want to make sure people really enjoy it. Uh, and when people really invest their time and their money into the program, then they actually get good use out of it. All right, let's see here if we have any more questions. Uh, hi, dear teacher, whereabouts are you living? Uh, right now I'm in Nagasaki, Japan. Nagasaki, Japan. I'm confused as I learn. Confused about what? Remember, people should be learning uh, things that interest you, that it's actually your, your level. So whatever your level is, uh, you can look at the comments in these, in these videos on the chat. Uh, some of them are quite complex, even if they have a few mistakes in them. So those people should probably go back and review some basics anyway, uh, but they can also understand some more like higher level information. Uh, but if you don't understand things, then go back to a lower level until you do. You should feel confident about your level and then start pushing up to a higher one. All right. Don't feel like you have to push yourself. All right. So uh, Patata clicked. Look at that. Clicked on uh, like. Yes. Look at that. Yes. Raise the number of likes on the video. <laughs> Raise the legs. All right. Uh, please explain alarm goes off. What? To go off. Yeah, this is a phrasal verb, to go off. All right. Now, again, I will give you some naturally varied review about some things that would go off. All right. Now, this is an interesting phrasal verb. It's an advanced one because it, it's not what you might think it is. Like, because when we talk about something going on, like the lights went on or the lights went off. So that's a very basic understanding of to go on or to go off. Like I turned the lights on, so the lights went on, and I turned the lights off, and the lights go off, all right? But you can also talk about an alarm going off. So an alarm going off, it means like we set an alarm. It's like just like we set a trap, and then it, it goes off, or a bomb goes off or an alarm goes off. So it's like it's like on kind of you, you can think about it like when it's set and prepared for something and then there's some sort of reaction or explosion. Okay? So when we're using it that way, remember as I mentioned earlier in this video, uh, the phrasal verb or other vocabulary can have different meanings. But usually if you learn them like a couple of different things, like an alarm going off or a bomb going off or like, I don't know, some like war or something like starting. So to go off, like I might go off on somebody if I'm yelling, I get really angry, there's an explosion for me. So my head doesn't actually explode, but maybe I get really angry, someone throws a shoe at me or something, uh, and then I go off. Like, oh no, Drew went off again. Oh no, I see, what the? And I start yelling at those people, I'm going off. All right. So typically in this use, and remember, you want to connect the vocabulary with the situation. We want to be connecting the vocabulary with the situation. We don't want to try to just remember what go off means by itself because words don't really mean anything by themselves. It's only when we connect them with the situation. And this is why you can have something like go off and it can mean different things in different situations. But one of these usage, uh, usages, the one you're asking about, uh, means like something is set or there's some kind of tension or it's prepared and then it goes off. So the timer went off. The alarm went off. The person went off when he started yelling at other people. Wow, Drew really went off. All right. So I went off on a, like I'm talking about one thing like this. You know, today is a nice day. I'm talking about the weather and the, and the picnic I want to do. And then like, whoa, I really went off talking about something completely different. I went off. All right. So you hear the, the naturally varied review. I'm giving you a bunch of different related uses of this. Does that, does that make sense? Hopefully uh, that makes sense. Who was asking about that? Uh, uh, okay, Maria got that. All right, could you please explain alarm goes off? Thank you for explaining just what I wanted to hear. Okay, glad to hear it. So remember, uh, it, it's, it's an interesting thing, like 
if you try to get one example of something, even if you repeat that example, like the same thing, like you try to learn go off, I'm just going to say go off, go off, go off. I don't really understand what that means. And I could say that thing or hear someone repeat that a hundred times and still not get it. But if I hear a couple of related examples, this is why we get naturally varied review. I want to get a couple of related examples of something and that's when it makes sense. It's, a, it's, it's really the network that I create with all these different examples that makes something understandable. And then I feel confident using it, all right? So this is why I teach like this rather than just trying to repeat something again and again. So it's a weird thing where like this example by itself, maybe you don't really understand. Or if I gave you this example, maybe you don't really understand that either. But this example plus that example, it's easier to understand. All right? So just like, like this thing went off, that thing went off, that thing went off, and, you're, and your mind is making a natural connection between all these things. Like what, how are these things related? And it's like, oh, look at that. There's some kind of explosion that happens, some kind of activity that happens very quickly after some kind of, you know, there's like a, a break or a pause or there's waiting or something like that. So like I set a trap to catch some kind of animal. And then in the middle of the night, the trap went off. Okay? So the same kind of idea. A gun, the gun went off. So maybe I accidentally shot someone. So I'm holding a gun and then same kind of idea. It's like I'm holding a gun and then boom, the gun went off. All right? All right. Uh, let's see. Samurai player again. Oh, wait, samurai player again. I see viewers here call you teacher, but I know that you don't call teachers teacher. In the U.S. you say... Uh, the surname instead, like Mr. Smith. Yes, call me Mr. Smith. <laughs> you can call me, call me Mr. Smith. Yes, you can actually, like, I, I, I don't really tell people to call me a teacher. Like, I call myself and many people call me the English fluency guy because typically a language teacher is someone who's trying to give you answers about things. So a student says, what does this mean? And the teacher says, here's a definition or here's a translation. So to me, that's not actually teaching anything. Teaching is when I can provide some information and then you make a connection in your own mind that you're like, look at that, I figured it out. So I'm a guide, not a teacher. All right, I'm a guide, not a teacher. But yes, uh, to answer your question, people use like Mr. Something or whatever. So like in Japanese, it's just like Nantoko-san or whatever, Matsumoto-san or Sensei or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so you can use that. So we typically, typically don't say teacher, but many people, we have people from all over the world who watch this and people use different things. I won't be angry if people call me a teacher, but I just don't call myself that. Uh, why am I understanding you perfectly, but well, not movies? All right, so this is another common situation uh, or a common question I get. Oh no, uh, my battery is running low. I'm gonna have to shut this down in just a moment. But uh, to answer this question, remember that these are two different kinds of English. So if you have uh, the conversational English that I'm using right now in this video, uh, it's much easier, much different than the kinds of stuff that you will find in a movie or TV show. So the, the vocabulary I'm using is easier. Uh, the way I'm explaining things is a lot easier. And also, uh, I'm, I'm just not using like, like hard to understand, like mumbling or uh, a difficult accent, something like that. So it's, it's almost like a different language. And this is why I talked about the different levels when we explain something. We want to watch lots of information, read the transcript. We want to be prepared when, uh, be, like before we even watch a TV show. So that when we do, we're, we're trying to make a, a bridge. So I call this closing the fluency gap. So if you try to go directly to a TV show, it's much more difficult. But if you start with something nice and easy and you work up to that, then it becomes much more uh, enjoyable and understandable. All right, let's see. All right, so I'm going to lose uh, my battery in like just a minute. So we're going to have to clean, uh, finish this up. But hopefully, let's see. Uh, Vic Krantz, so thanks for applying. Is there any way to pr uh, process for a non-native person to learn the language in a faster pace similar to the one in which a native person learns to speak? This is it. This is how natives learn and this is how you should be learning too. So again, naturally varied review, you're learning real native content, you're learning what natives are learning, and you're not just getting one example of it. 
So you want to be learning lots of different things, and that that's what creates a network in your mind. And the network is it's, it's literally like a net that catches information and helps you understand information. So that's how you learn. Thank you for the show. Otsukare sama desu. Yes. Oh, koe ga chotte ne. Itaku natteru ne. Nihonjin desu ka? You Japanese? Are you just like in, in Japan? I know some people, maybe they are, they are in Japan, but not Japanese and watching this. Uh, hi, Mr. Drew. I'm uh, Jibril from DRC. I guess that's the Congo. I uh, really love the way you speak and explain. I always do my best to speak like you. Glad to hear it. Uh, how a uh, hello is a beginning lesson English. I don't know what that means. I love your beautiful way of explaining by making things as simple as possible. Glad to hear it. Uh, you make me believe in myself. Yes, glad to hear it. Remember, you can do this. I spent 15 years struggling to learn different languages. It's not because I'm stupid. I mean, maybe I'm not that smart, but uh, it, it's not because I'm stupid. It's mostly because I just didn't learn through that language. I was trying to learn French through English. I was trying to learn Spanish through English, trying to learn Latin through English, trying to learn Japanese through English. But when I started Japanese in Japanese and everything was like, oh, look at that. Now I understand. I feel confident about using the language and that's why I speak. So people were asking me today, like just in that conversation before, before this, uh, this video. So how did you learn how to speak? I just said, I learned Japanese in Japanese. They're like, what? You know, <laughs> it's like kind of a, a crazy thing to people. All right. Let's see here. Yo, bro, greetings from Mexico, says Alejandro. All right. Well, I'm going to lose uh, the chat in just a moment when my computer dies, but thank you for joining me. If you'd like to learn more, again, like this is a very simple process. Uh, I recommend you watch a lot of the recent videos I've made. They are long, but you will listen to a lot of language. And if you, if you kind of copy the things I'm saying and listen to me explain things, you will hear these language patterns again and again. So watch those videos. You will learn some good tips about how to learn the native way, how to learn English as a first language rather than learning through your, uh, le learning through your native language. All right. So I, as usual, I have my lots of stuff on the board. It's my time to uh, say goodbye. Hopefully, let's see. Glad to hear from you again. All right. Nice to see everybody there. Yes, I would love to keep going. But again, my battery is going to fail me in just a moment. But have a fantastic day. If you'd like to learn more with me, like learn how to pronounce words or understand vocabulary, get Frederick or join us in Fluent for Life. You can learn both, uh, about both of those in the description below this video. Be sure to like this video, tell other people about it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.